the word of God and how few people are doing that in this country. So we bless him in his ministry in Laos. We bless him uh, just faithfully preaching the word of God to the people there. And we're so thankful that he can, has an opportunity to leave Laos for a short time and to come to the United States, travel church to church, who is supporting him, who is preaching the same message here in the United States, such as ours. We're so thankful for Abraham again. Bless his words, bless his challenge and conviction to our, us and here in our congregation, Father. We're so thankful again for him and his ministry. We thank you and we praise you. Son, Holy Spirit, we pray. Abraham, thank you so much for coming to the United States. Welcome to Indianapolis, Indiana. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Well, um, once again, I would like to say good morning to each one of you. Uh, before I start, I have a board and a paper here in my hand. So this is about uh, mailing list, how we love to share with you an update of our ministry. Now, if you want to receive one, please write down your name and your email. Uh, it's not compulsory. You can... Uh, our pastor, if you want. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Well, we are so happy that um, we have a few months of our journey in America. Uh, it's We are so grateful to God that God has given us this journey to share our ministry in the Southeast Asia to this great country in America. Yeah. Every one of you here, you have a lot of freedom, but right there in our country, uh, not in my country, but in Laos, we don't have freedom to hear the word of God rightly divided. So it's our privilege uh, that we can at least share God's word to them and uh, that uh, the word of God will be enlightened to their hearts and they will... Uh, be one of uh, a few chosen uh, children of God that they will serve God also and share the word of God rightly divided. So today and this morning, I would like to share with you the word of God taken from Philippians. If you have your Bible, uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse um, <clears throat> Number 19 until verse number 23. Yeah, 23. Yeah, it says there, But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all seek their own. Not the things which are Jesus Christ, but ye know the proof of him that as a son with a father, he had served with me in the gospel. May God bless the reading of the scripture. Let us pray. Our father God in heaven, we praise you, Lord, and we thank you for today. Thank you, Lord, for your word that we're going to listen today. We're so grateful for our brothers and sisters here in Indianapolis. Thank you, Lord, for their dedication and their service to you, God. And I pray that as we look on to your word, I pray that we learn something and we can learn this word in our lives as we continue to serve you, God. Bless us all together and use your servant, O God. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, I'd like to share to you, well, where is that? I would like to go back. <clears throat> a servant heart. That's the topic that we're going to discuss this morning. A servant heart. Now, uh, when you talk about servant, it's a very low word, right? It's not an adoring word. It's not a word that everybody would like. Right? It's not a word that uh, everybody will appreciate, hey, I want to be a servant. <laughs> yes? No, it's not that way. But in the terms, in the perspective of our Lord Jesus Christ in the ministry, the Apostle Paul said, I am the servant of Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Look at the word of the Apostle Paul in chapter 1, verse 1. Paul and Timotheus, the servant of Jesus Christ, to all saints, 
in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, the bishop and deacons. Paul said that servants. So as a servant, as an apostle, he is the servant of our Lord Jesus Christ. Meaning, he is trying to follow the teaching and the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ that God has given unto him. Now, this is uh, another one example of being a servant. In Mark chapter 10, verse 41 to 45, maybe you know what is the context of this uh, of these uh, verses. You know that John and James requested the Lord Jesus Christ that during his uh, sitting on the kingdom, that one of them will be sitting at the right and one of them is sitting at the left side. Okay? And of course, according to this verse, in uh, let's, let's look on verse number uh, 45. <clears throat> verse number 45. It said, our Savior did not come to be served, but to serve and to give himself a ransom for of many. According to the Bible that, hey, if you want to be a leader, you must be, you must be ministering. If you want to be the chief, the, the, very, the very top, you must minister to the people. It simply means that uh, uh, being, being a leader, you must have a humble heart, a heart that is a good, a heart that is serving to the people that you are serving. Can you do that? Maybe it's so, oh, that's so hard, Pastor Abi, Pastor Abraham, so hard. Yeah, it's very hard. Okay, now the question is, uh, what are some of the characteristics of a good servant? What are some of characteristics of a servant heart? Here, I have two. Actually, we can finish this one in 10 minutes. Okay? <laughs> I wish. Now, number one, servant's heart is centered on the things on Jesus. Okay? Look at the, the, the word of the Apostle Paul in... Uh, the verse, the verses that we just read here. Um, it says the Apostle Paul was a man whose focus was on our Lord Jesus Christ. If we try to look at the Apostle Paul from the beginning of his ministry, okay, before his uh, calling, being an apostle, he was so strong and anyone really try to respect him because whatever he said, you will die, you will die, something like that. But after his calling, he was changed. So there was a change from being superior into a lower degree of people. Okay? And the Apostle Paul is, uh, his focus is no other than our Lord Jesus Christ. So, me as a pastor, a servant of God, well, that is our desire that we will follow the footsteps of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that only those who are called, those who are pastor, that all of us as a child of God, it is our focus that we will follow our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, But I trust in the Lord Jesus Christ to send Timothy shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. Here in this, uh, the context of this Philippians uh, chapter two, that there will be problem of division or something, a sort that one so in, in verse number two. It says, fulfill you my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. So from this verse, we can imagine, we can say that in the church, of Philippi, there will be conflict. There will be division among them. Okay? That's why he said, I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus. Why? Because Timotheus want to uh, tell them what the Apostle Paul is teaching him and to exhort them about the Word of God. That I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. Because the Apostle Paul has 
a sort of a sort of problem. Why these people are having this problem? Division in the church. Okay, when you talk about division, this is really a problem in the church. When there is division, when there is no uh, focus, when there is no like-minded, there is division and comes problem, right? Now, the Apostle Paul in his heart has the focus on our Lord Jesus Christ. Timotheus' focus also was on the Lord. Paul said, state that unlike many others, Timotheus was not seeking after his own interests instead of those of Jesus Christ. Look at verse number 21. It says here, For all seek their own, not the things that are in Jesus Christ. For everybody, everybody is seeking their own interests, but not Timothy. Timothy is just focusing on his service, his ministry on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is focused on our Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, yeah, in Philippians, for all seek their own, not the things which are our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. As a, as a Christian, uh, the Bible always telling us to focus on the Lord. Uh, as I read in um, Hebrews chapter 11 a while ago this morning, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Here, the writer of the Hebrews tells us to look unto Jesus. Okay? Why? Because he is the only being that we can trust on. Don't look to your pastor. Your pastor is very handsome. Don't look on him. No? No. He has some, maybe, maybe there are times that up, maybe there are some also that is done, right? So don't look on anybody, but look on our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? The next one is, Timothy served with Paul in the furtherance of the gospel. Christ and the gospel were at the center of Timothy's life. Look at verse number 22. You know that, but he know the proof of him that as a son with a father, he had served with me in the gospel. Now here, uh, <clears throat> this young pastor in the church has really a good attitude in his service to the Lord. His focus is on the Lord Jesus Christ, centered on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is preaching on the gospel of the grace of God and focus only to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Now this is, might be our uh, good attitude. According to, who is that? Thomas? Cannot read clearly. Thomas Manson. As we make Christ the center of our lives, our fears will be replaced by the courage of our conviction. So here is, uh, according to Thomas, as we focus on, on the Lord Jesus Christ, our fear will be replaced by our courage. The Bible says that God is not giving us the spirit of fear, but of love and of faith and of sound mind. We pray and we just pray that as we continue to walk in this journey of Christian life, that we, our lives, will be centered and focused on our Lord Jesus Christ. The power of focus, according to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, who would save us and call us a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world. So if we have a focus, we have a goal to achieve in our Christian life. If our producer also was a faithful servant, you see, whose focus was on things of Christ. So we know who is a producer, right? He's also one of the great uh, follower and 
and servant of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, he said, whose focus was on the things of Christ. He had posed himself almost to the point of death to bring gift to Paul from Philippi, Philippian church. So if you try to look on um, uh, verses number, uh, we'll see here, verse number 22. Oh yeah, yeah, number 24. But I trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, that I also myself shall come shortly. Verse 25. Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you, Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that he had heard that he had been sick. And for indeed he was sick nigh unto death, but God has mercy on him, and not on him only, but also on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Here, look at this one. The Apostle Paul described uh, uh, Epaphroditus as a brother, companion in labor, fellow soldier, and messenger, and minister of my wants. So there are four characteristics that the that the Apostle Paul tried to describe this Epaphroditus. He is a brother in the Lord. He is a companion in labor, working together with the Apostle Paul. And fellow soldier, he is also a soldier in the Lord. And your messenger, and he that ministered to my one. Here, in this uh, passage, we can look that this, uh, the Apostle Paul, Timothy and Epaphroditus, these three people of three people of God were really centered their mind, their hearts, and their love to the service of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Call, Paul calls Epaphroditus a minister to my need and state that he had completed by his presence what the Philippians could not do in their absence in service to Paul. So this, uh, instead of the church will uh, make service to, uh, to Paul because they are not available, they send Epaphroditus in their stead. So in that aspect, that Epaphroditus is serving the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ through the needs of the apostles. So uh, a brother, a fellow worker, a fellow soldier, a messenger, a, a minister to the need or to the Paul's need. So the, this brother is so uh, humble. He's a kind of person that is really uh, ready to work where, wherever the Lord will uh, leads him to go and to do. Okay. His focus in Christ and his work should not just be true of those who earn their living from the gospel. Here, the Apostle Paul is talking about uh, those who are working in the gospel, those who are uh, ministering in the gospel. According to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17, uh, let's try to read that one. I cannot memorize that. Uh-huh. Um, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17, until verse number 18. It says, Let the elders that rule will be counted worthy of double honor, especially the whole labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture said, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that traded out the horn, and the laborers is worthy of his reward. So here there are a lot of things that uh, the Apostle Paul is teaching in for the so-called minister of the gospel. Those who are pastors, those who are teaching the word of God, okay? In the old time, when uh, they are using ox carabaos in our, in our, in the Philippines, we are using carabaos and cows to plow the fields, okay? 
And sometimes if uh, the if the owner will not muscle the, the mouth of the, the ox or carabao, he just eat everything that he can see while plowing, right? Well, that is uh, good for that animals, but it's not good for the farmer, right? Now here, uh, the apostle Paul, the apostle Paul said that uh, the scripture said, thou shalt not muscle the ox that traded out the corn. Meaning, let them eat because that is their part, right? So as a, a Christian, we must have uh, entails in our mind, in our hearts, that we will support our pastors. We will support our leaders in the church. And look at the second part. It says, the laborer is worthy of his reward. Okay? The laborer, those who are labored in the gospel is worthy for his reward. Okay? So that's the Bible says. <clears throat> the next portion. Every Christian, however, earn their living in the gospel. Live in the fellowship with God, in submission to his will, in obedience to his word, available to do his work. Look at Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer that I live, but Christ liveth in me. That life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Here the Apostle Paul is trying to say that my life is not, is I am not, it's okay for me to die. It is okay for me to what? To work hard. It is okay for me to be in the Lord. Okay? He said, it is no longer that I that liveth in me. Not himself, but Christ living in him or to the last to the apostle Paul. Okay, I live by faith to the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Okay, the apostle Paul said, My life I am living by faith, I am focusing on the service of our Lord Jesus Christ. I hope that this verse will speak to us, will speak to us, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, that our service, our focus is only. To the Lord. They are willing to be sent anywhere. Okay, the Apostle Paul said, I wouldn't have been easy for Timothy to leave the side of his beloved father in the faith in order to go to Philippi. But he was willing to go if that was God's will. Here, the Apostle Paul is uh, this young Timothy in his character that he loved to stay in Philippian church. He loved to minister to them. But if God will send him to the service of the Apostle, the Apostle Paul, he's willing to go. The word willingness in the part of uh, the life of the young Tim. Okay? It didn't have been easy for Epaphroditus to leave the comfort home and journey to Rome. But he had done it. In the life of Epaphroditus, it's, it is good for him also to stay in his house, in his family, okay? It's very hard to journey, especially during the time, right? But he's willing to do that one because God told him to do it, okay? Now, um, and Isaiah, whom shall I send? The, our Jehovah is calling someone, whom shall I send? And Isaiah said, here I am, Lord, sent me. Isaiah presented himself, and he, he is willing to obey and to go wherever the Lord leads him to go. I hope and pray that that would be also our attitude as we continue to serve the Lord. They are willing to serve anyone without, oh, I will serve him, only, only him. No, everybody, regardless of status of life, uh, servant heart is willing to serve anyone. It's very hard work. 
anyone, right? To serve anyone. Well, in Timothy, to prepare the way of Paul, he said in, uh, he said that I hope therefore to send him just as soon as I see how I will go with me. And I will trust in the Lord that shortly I myself will come also. To send Timothy is a selfish act from Paul. For Timothy is useful to Paul. To Paul. Paul desires to follow him if God will it. Here, look at this, uh, these people of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. No? They have a good life in their, in their lives, okay? But these lives, they are using these lives for the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. They are willing to go anywhere if God will send them. That is, and they are willing to serve anyone if that is the will of God. Amen? Let's continue. If Aphroditus served, Philippians, uh, served the Philippians church, but he is willing to go and serve Paul. He said, only mention in Philippians for financial gift from Philippians to Paul. Call Paul's brother, fellow workers, and fellow soldier and minister to my needs. Nearly died in sacrifice. Uh, sacrificial ministry or service to Paul. Look at this man. According to the, the, the word that the verses that we just read, this uh, person, the Papoditos, nearly died according to verse number 27. For indeed he was sick, nigh to death. It's almost, almost died. Okay? But God has mercy on him. And not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. What I mean is that this person is really is, is willing to sacrifice himself, even to the point of death, to serve the Lord, to obey the Lord. What a sacrifice, right? Well, just pray that to, we can do that what? Right? Because they are our example. As a Christian. Amen? That is the life of uh, Epaphroditus. There's a lot, also another man. Philip. Okay? Philip who was being used by God to reach great multitudes in Samaria. But willing to go to a deserted road. Where the Lord used him to reach the Ethiopian eunuch. So this is also a great example. Philip is ministering in Samaria. Doing a great job for service of the Lord. But God told him to go to a deserted place. Okay? Because there is a, a, a Ethiopian eunuch reading Isaiah. And uh, that eunuch, although educated, cannot understand what he's reading. God sent Philip to let this eunuch understand the word of God. Simply means about willingness if God told you for that. Timothy and Epaphroditus, role model, role model for joyful service. Amen? <coughs> they are a great model for a joyful service for the Lord. Okay. So, they are willing to sacrifice anything. Another great characteristic of a servant heart is they are willing to sacrifice anything. Timothy had, had given his own interest to become a servant of Christ. Given, give up his own interest as a young, as a young uh, pastor. He has also a good interest for his life. But give up that one to serve God. Amen? Another one, let each of you look not only to your own interest, but also to the interest of uh, Philippians chapter 2 verse. Yeah. Epaphroditus almost lost his life in the service for the Lord for the Philippian church but this man is doing that for the service of God 
The Apostle Paul said in Acts chapter 20, verse 23 to 24, save that the Holy Ghost witness in every city saying that bands and afflictions abide me. Look at verse number 24. And I love this verse. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. This, word is, this verse is not new to each one of us, right? It's not new. Almost we uh, memorize this one. But here the Apostle Paul is trying to say that he is really willing to do anything in order to do the work of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the second. Servant hearts puts other ahead of himself for the sake of Christ. Put others ahead. Not himself ahead for others, but others ahead of himself. Okay? Accordingly, don't wait for other people to, to be loving, giving, compassionate, grateful, forgiving, generous, or friendly. Let the way. So, oh, that one is not really good character. That one, that, that one. No, accordingly, lay the way. That is one of the characteristics of a servant heart. He will show genuine concern. Genuine concern for others. Here, in uh, verse number 20 to 22, I have no man like-minded who will naturally, that, that, that word, naturally care for your state. This young pastor, he has a natural ability to care the state of the Philippian church. Timothy, servant's mind, kindred spirit, others looking after their own interests, but not him, serving and training, serve with or say not serve all, but serve with. Okay? So this man is really having a genuine and concern for others. A leader must be good listener. He must be willing to take counsel. He must show genuine concern and love for those under his stewardship. That's one also a good characteristic of a good leader. Number three, you can work cooperatively, cooperatively with others. Timothy served with Paul like a child as a father. You see, behold how good and how pleasure, a pleasant it is for brother to dwell together in unity. It is really good to work one another in unity. In Psalms 133, verse 1 to 3. According to Galatians, carry each other's burden. And this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Carry one another's burden. For our conclusion, this is what it takes. It says, give yourself away. Paul, joyful service, generous love, a life in Christ. Timothy, proven character, genuine service, serving Christ. Epaphroditus, serve others. Rest his life serving Christ. This is a challenge to each one of us. Follow their examples. Christ-like character, humble service, serving from the heart, acts of worship. God bless you and God bless this world.
Thank you. 